1138 Rajalakshmi Engineering College, Chennai. Over to you. Rajalakshmi Engineering College. What is the significance of the isentropic efficiency in steam turbine? So, is is that your question? I suppose your question is. What is the significance of isentropic efficiency of a steam turbine? The isentropic efficiency is defined for an adiabatic open system which either produces power or delivers power. An open system. of the type turbine or compressor or nozzle. If you have, we can define a term called isentropic efficiency. Such devices are usually one inlet, one outlet steady state. Hence, from the first law, from the second law for such a device on a TS diagram, the entropy of the inlet state and the entropy of the exit state under ideal conditions would be the same. The ideal condition for this means adiabatic and reversible and hence isentropic. However, even if they remain adiabatic, this is a requirement, the they cannot be reversible and hence the entropy at the exit will have to be higher than that at the inlet. Actual process will be something like this and hence for example, this is true for a turbine. We will have S E greater than S e star which should be equal to S i and because of this your H e will be greater than H e star the enthalpy. Okay. In case of a gas even temperature at exit e will be higher than temperature at e star and we define the isentropic efficiency as the actual power output divided by the ideal power out which is given by W dot star. So, the isentropic efficiency represents the non-reversible behavior of uh, a turbine or a compressor or a nozzle. If the uh, uh, turbine or compressor or nozzle is adiabatic and reversible that means isentropic there will be no irreversible behavior shown and the isentropic efficiency would be exactly 100 percent or 1. Over to you. Uh, sir, hello. Uh, yes, go ahead. Sir, in test 1 the question is the state of the state of water in atmospheric air is superheated condition, sir. Uh, how is it possible, sir? Please explain, sir. I think this was explained just now by Professor Bhandarkar that uh, if you look at the typical condition, which is not 100 percent relative humidity, but something less than the saturation condition uh, in from the point of view of air, you will notice that the if you look up the temperature of air, which would be the temperature of water vapor and if you look at only the water vapor part in air. So, look at the partial pressure of water vapor you will find that it is in the superheated state, okay. except in the limiting case where the 
uh, vapor pressure and the concentration of water vapor is so large that we have 100 percent relative humidity, in which case in the limiting case it will be dry saturated vapor. Any increase in humidity will not increase the vapor content, it will only increase the liquid content. That means, any addition of vapor will tend to condense that moisture in the vapor over. Sir, why internal combustion engine gives higher temperature as compared to external combustion engine sir? Can you tell me that sir? Okay. Uh, the reason for this is from the engineering and materials point of view. Uh, when you burn some fuel, the fuel releases heat and can reach a certain temperature. Uh, you would have learnt about this release of heat as calorific related to calorific value and the temperature related to the flame temperature of that fluid. Now, when this is internal combustion, the energy is released within the fluid itself. You do not have to transfer it. So, if you can take the fluid almost near to its flame temperature, because you do not have to transfer it. There is no uh, resistance to the heat transfer from the combustion products to the fluid, because the combustion is taking place in the fluid itself. Whereas, if you burn the fuel external to the working fluid, then the temperature reached will be in the outside the working fluid. You will have to transfer the heat across the wall which separates the working fluid from the combustion chamber. And this heat transfer requires a certain amount of temperature difference. So, by that amount depending on the area provided and the type of intervening boundary thickness of metal and its conductivity, the temperature of the working fluid reached will be that much lower. Over to you. Hello. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Uh, I have a doubt. Uh, which will give more efficiency whether reheat cycle or regenerative cycle sir? Uh, please repeat your question. What has more efficiency? A reheat cycle or a regenerative cycle sir? So, the answer to your question, your question asked comparison between the efficiency uh, when you do regeneration compared to the efficiency when you do reheat. I suppose this pertains to uh, Rankine cycle or it may even pertain to Brayton cycle, but in any case the change in efficiency because regeneration and because of reheat depends on the parameter. That means, at what intermediate pressure you do the amount uh, you start the reheating and up to what temperature you take the reheating. Same thing depends on the regeneration. So, I cannot uh, say that one is always than the other. Over to you. Thank you, sir. Over and out. One, two, four, nine, Sri Ramakrishna Institute, Coimbatore. Sir, I have one doubt related to entropy. Yes. The internal energy depends upon the temperature only. That is true only for an ideal gas. Only for an ideal gas, the internal energy depends only on temperature, that is Joule's law. But sir, what about entropy? So, which condition increases or decreases? See, entropy in general, even for an ideal gas, is a function of temperature and pressure. And the entropy if you have either a constant volume process or a constant pressure process, the entropy increases with temperature. And if uh, the temperature is maintained constant, the entropy increases as you go to lower pressures and entropy increases as you go to higher volumes. Over to you. Hello. I have in first law of thermodynamics we are using a one word arbitrary. What is the meaning for arbitrary? Arbitrary means anything which you select. Where did I use that word? Because the word arbitrary is used in many places in my lectures. So, 
can you refer me to the context for integration we are using cyclic integration the arbitrary constant ha 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 okay 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 the arbitrary constant means a constant of your choice nothing special about it i think i made a statement that the energy of a system or internal energy of a system the absolute value of that number of that internal energy is of no use to us because it is defined as a difference and we will always be using it as a difference in any exercise any problem any situation thank you forano One 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 six H G S I T S indoor. Over to you. Uh, so I know I have asked this before, and some has. I know I have asked this before, and some uh, some of this has uh, been covered earlier also. Uh, but again, quickly, the entire thermodynamics is rooted in the ideas of uh, energy, space, time, matter, and this um, very enigmatic term called entropy. Um, and very little has been done to cover uh, this idea in detail uh, any further than that uh, how exactly the fundamental idea of uh, entropy is related with say improving the performance of any of these work producing devices uh, that we in mechanical engineering come across uh, that's been See, the question for me um, earlier also okay i don't know uh, to what extent and in what what branch of mechanical engineering uh, your endeavor is this is uh, uh, your endeavors exist but for thermal engineers like us who work with uh, nozzles turbines compressors and their components entropy is a very important property because we use it day in and day out for analyzing the performance of a nozzle performance of other components of turbines you, know, you can't solve a single problem in the detailed analysis of a turbine without using entropy because that's the anchoring property out there for all not only the overall process but even individual processes so as we work and start applying it entropy doesn't remain such an ab abstract concept anymore over to you Uh, sorry to interrupt, but uh, it's not been. So is it? So is there one common definition, say, amongst all, say, physicists, chemists, uh, or chemical engineers, as well as mechanical engineers, the way it's understood and defined fundamentally? Uh, because if it's not, or at least uh, that's not something that has been covered so far here. And unless we are absolutely clear about that idea, relating any further with. uh improving the performance of these work producing devices that we are coming across is really not uh, relatable they are really not making uh, a very definite link between the two see you are entitled to your opinion but the fact remains that the common definition of entropy among engineers physicists and chemists it simply ds is dq by t for a reversible process nobody will take objection to that definition of entropy so if you still say that it is uh, ill defined or not defined where well, you are welcome to your opinion i can't say anything more over to you no okay. uh, so some of us may be interested in working on uh, one of this ideas energy or matter dispers dispersal uh, leading to the idea of entropy again within the realm of chemical uh, engineering or chemical thermodynamics would this be of any interest to you or any of the faculties with you uh, if we want to consult any further on this uh, you will have to talk to uh, members in iit bombay who work in the chemistry department or chemical engineering department uh, in mechanical engineering we are uh, working in plant uh, of the power producers and refrigeration kind where except for the combustion process which is a specialized chemical reaction we don't really have any uh, reactions going on right yeah. over to you thank you uh, second question would be what would be a good definition of a spontaneous process uh, and 
a good example to support that. Uh, well, a spontaneous process is one which can takes place, which can take place without any trigger being applied. But uh, that uh, anything, for example. Uh, uh, a uh, mass left at a height without any support comes down, that is a spontaneous process. You can give any many illustrations of a natural process like that. You do not have to hunt out for example. Uh, water at a height normally, waterfall. Uh, waterfall, water at a height, it is a spontaneous process. Without any external agency that was my… Yeah, without any external agency, you have a system containing hot water just left by itself, unless you insulate it there will uh, and prevent the heat transfer. If you just leave it, well spontaneously it starts cooling, starts uh, uh, transferring heat to the surroundings which are at a lower temperature. Okay. And finally again, uh, we have enjoyed your course very thoroughly all along, so this presentation has been excellent. Uh, my final question would be, uh, again all these entities or quantities, for example, matter, time, space, uh, do you think, do you feel or do you think uh, can be reduced to a one common source, for example, the current cosmological model of uh, Big Bang, for instance? Well, I, I am not that deep into physics, so I cannot really answer that question. Over to you. All right. Uh, again, thank you for all your time and all your explanations. Over and out. There are only a few minutes to 5.30. Let me try one more center. 1118 Sri Jayachama Rajendra College, Mysore. Over to you. Do they know that we are looking at them? Hello. Yeah. Hello. 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 Good evening, sir. Hello. Good evening. Hello. Good evening, sir. Sir, my question is when uh, in a throttling calorimeter, when wet steam is passed through the throttle, how it is going to convert to superheated steam, sir? It does not always convert to superheated steam. If you, I think that was one of the questions in the exercises. If you look up the Mollier diagram, HS, the x equal to 1, the saturated vapor line goes something like this and critical point is somewhere here and these are the lines of constant dryness fractions, something like this. So, if you have the pressure of steam and the wetness somewhere here, after throttling, if it ends up in the superheated zone, these are various pressure lines. This is T exit, this is T inlet, and this is the inlet state I. This is the process. I am showing it by a continuous line, but actually it should be a dotted line because the throttling relation, the throttling process, when first law is applied to it, we get uh, just HI equals HE. And we know that as pressure reduces, the entropy at constant enthalpy goes on increasing. So, if the inlet dryness fraction is not very low, you will end up with which is usually P ambient the exit. At exit, you will end up with superheated uh, steam. But if your uh, inlet, say I prime, is at a much lower dryness fraction, even after the throttling, you will end up with E prime which is still in the wet zone. In this particular case, you cannot determine the uh, dryness fraction using purely a throttling calorimeter. You will have to use a throttling come separating calorimeter or you will have to use a, a heated heating throttling calorimeter. Over to you. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. One more question, sir. So, in throttling process, the, when the steam is passed through the throttling, the steam is getting into a superheated steam. 
but in the refrigeration system when passing through the throttling we get into the liquid what is the difference between here throttling and that refrigeration system in throttling sir that is the, the, the please basic, clarify that one sir the basic uh, idea is simply this uh, basic difference is this in throttling calorimeter usually we have vapor which dryness fraction near 1 whereas in refrigeration system the throttling process begins with saturated liquid a very low enthalpy liquid so when you uh, throttle it well at lower pressure the dryness fraction is higher so it's higher than 0 but it's nowhere near 1 so that is why it's end up being uh, a liquid vapor mixture with a low dryness fraction over to you actually i completely i confused about the shock waves Confused Actually, the question is, what are the benefits of shock waves? Shock waves. Okay, this is a question pertaining to Professor Puranik, uh, who has gone away for a meeting with our R&D office. So he will be back here at nine o'clock tomorrow morning. We'll note down the center one 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 eight, and uh, uh, please raise your hand at nine ten or nine fifteen tomorrow morning and uh, we will pass this question on to him. Over to you. Uh, one more question. Sir, what is the difference between detonation and knocking in an engine? Uh, detonation and knocking in an IC engine. Okay. Uh, I passed it on to Professor Bhandarkar and he says this is uh, much more detailed in combustion and combustion uh, aerodynamics and he does not want to answer that just now. We will discuss this later, ask it on Moodle, we will do our homework and get back to you. Question. Sir, uh, usually we use nitrous oxide in an engine, so what does, like how does the performance increase by using nitrous oxide? We use how does the performance of the engine increase by using nitrous oxide? In fact, this is the first time I am hearing that we are using nitrous oxides in an engine. In fact, uh, nitrogen oxides are the products of uh, high temperature combustion in presence of nitrogen. So, we will not be using it, uh, engine will be producing it and it is a very significantly bad uh, uh, pollutant. So, we go to extra lengths to operate our engine and design the combustion chamber so that they are not produced. So, we do not use them in an engine. Over to you. So usually in supercars and like race cars and race bikes we use it. Well, I do not know uh, for what purpose they are used, we will have to check that out. But in our normal engines we do not use. Over to you. So one more question. Sir, usually we use uh, nitrogen gas filled in uh, like uh, tires of vehicles right now, like mm -hmm. recently. So, why do we do it? Any specific use? Yeah, you know, I, I, I have been thinking about it. There does not seem to be any thermodynamic reason. Uh, there are some reasons, one, some possible reasons are perhaps the permeability of nitrogen through the uh, rubber or tube or the tire may be lower than that of oxygen. So, uh, perhaps the uh, uh, deflation rate is much lower. But remember that air which we generally fill our tires with is 80 percent nitrogen. So, replacing that 20 percent oxygen, 20, 21 percent oxygen by an equivalent nitrogen, I do not think makes any significant difference. Over to you. I know many people who have uh, gone over to nitrogen tires and then have come back to uh, uh, normal air inflation saying I did not find any difference except that I have to pay more money to fill up the nitrogen. Over to you again. Yeah, sir. Thank you, sir. Over and out, sir. So, that brings us to the end of the day. <laughs>